I'm Scott L. Miller. This is my daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I'm just feeling like recording some in the office today, so why not? I, we need a change of pace. And I got a question from Dovey Good Guy 1296. Uh, I wonder why, with the name Dovey Good Guy, that you needed the 1296 at the end. Are there that many Dovey Good Guys out there on YouTube that I just, 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 we're wondering? Anyway, he has a question about what political instability in Guatemala will do to affect your decision, choosing, in this case, specifically between Guatemala and Nicaragua, for an expat or an immigrant who's looking at long-term stays in that country. So, let's get to that. The book. I'm gonna get these wires cleaned up sometime soon, I swear. I've gotta change a whole bunch of electrical, so I apologize that the background isn't all cool, but I've got this little orange cat thing going on. He's pretty awesome. So, okay, so specifically, Dovey Good Guy is responding to, and this is why I'm doing a separate video and not responding in direct response to that one, because it was on a video where we were comparing Nicaragua and Guatemala for tourism, for someone who's just looking at taking a vacation. And so this is a slightly different topic. So what Dovey Good Guy asks is, when it comes to relocating to Guatemala, isn't it the case that Guatemala is politically very unstable, which would be a big con for relocating or retiring there in comparison with Nicaragua. So he brings us up because Nicaragua is really stable politically, and a lot of people like to, to use political st stability. We have a number of videos about this, so I'm not going to go into depth here, but I do want to read just from Wikipedia, giving you a quick. Political stability is a situation characterized by the preservation of an intact and smoothly functioning government or political system, avoiding significant disruptions or changes over an extended duration. Political stability signifies a state of tranquility, organization, and sustained continuity within the political domain. It is marked by consistent institutions and policies, as well as a commitment to upholding the rule of law. And then it gives some things that like what you expect it to do. I don't necessarily agree with some of their like what you expect it to do. I think it may be wrong in that, but those are opinions. This is the what it is defined as, and that's what we care about. So actually one of the things about political stability as a term is that it actually refers to the history of a country's stability in the way that they're talking about and not necessarily its potential for instability, uh, which is important, right? Because like the United States has been stable, but we know it is a powder keg. Everyone knows it is. And so we view it as unstable because we know at any moment all kinds of things could break loose, but it is also unstable in general because it doesn't have a, a state of tranquility. It is not well organized. It does not have um, sustained continuity in the political domain, and it is not currently, or for a long time, it does not uphold the rule of law. So in every aspect, the United States is a great example of not politically stable, even though a single government system has remained in place, all the other aspects of it, it fails at. Maybe not fails miserably, but it definitely falls on the strongly unstable side. Nicaragua, you take all these things and look at them, and they fall strongly on the stable side. Um, the United States is looking at changes every four to eight years, not necessarily because of the president, because of the entire political uh, election rotation system causes these swings and you expect relatively strong changes of direction. In the last few years, we've had massive changes in the concept of what the law is. For example, the Supreme Court ruled that they were not held to the law and had absolute power and that all other divisions uh, answered to them and that Congress could not make laws, only the Supreme Court could Congress could only recommend them. Complete change as to the law and structure of the United States government without anyone voting, without any agreement. They fundamentally changed everything that we believed about American political systems just in the last couple of years. Uh, so those are, those are really major points of instability. Um, it doesn't make it a bad thing. Maybe that's a good thing, depending on, on who you are, what it is you want, how you want your you know political uh, situation to be. But political stability doesn't suggest that the stability causes good or bad things, only that there's upheaval, which is why later they say, you know, political stability is essential for a nation's development, economic growth, blah, blah, blah. That is not true, right? It simply isn't. Political stability tends to help those things. Absolutely. Is it critical for it? No. You can have a completely disastrous, unstable system and still have massive development, economic growth, and social unity. The United States is a perfect example. Massive instability still has great economic power. Clearly, the two do not, do not become directly tied. But if the U.S. was stable, would that help it? Maybe. Probably. Does most places. So, Nicaragua. Um, significant disruptions or changes over an extended period? Nope. Very stable. Uh, state of tranquility? Yes. Organized? Yes. Sustained continuity with the political domain? Absolutely. Marked by consistent institutions and policies as a commitment to upholding the rule of law? 
Yes, all those things, right? It's a civil law country, not a common law country, right? You can't even talk about rule of law in a common law country. I mean, you can, but it's a lie, right? Common law means there's not a rule of law. There's a rule of judges. It's different. The laws are only uh, recommendations to judges. They are, this is what the people through semi-elected representatives think that people want as a law, but under common law, and this is the Supreme Court upheld this, Every, like multiple times in the last five years, this has been absolutely upheld. The law is as determined by the judge on the spot. Ergo, rule of law is illegal in the United States, period. Full stop, there is no rule of law. So by definition, the United States in any other common law country, right? Not politically stable. Okay, so that just gives you some examples. So here in the region, Nicaragua, yes, very stable. What about Guatemala? So Guatemala has had um, a, a history of political instability. And I don't want to go deep into Guatemalan politics. It's not my place. It's not your place, right? But it's just, when we're talking about stability, we can talk about that, right? Because it's not an opinion as to whether that stability is good or bad. It's not an opinion about the results of that stability being good or bad. It's just whether there are lots of changes and you have to be ready to roll with the punches or if you can just be with a steady system, right? A steady system isn't necessarily a good system. We're not recommending that a certain steady system is, is great or bad, just that it's steady. Make sense? I hope so. Okay, so Nicaragua, very steady. Guatemala, relatively unsteady. United States, very unsteady, right? Well, Guatemala leans towards the U.S. So the first question I always ask people is, would you avoid living in the United States due to political instability? There may be other reasons you want to leave, sure, but is the political instability a reason to leave? Oh, actually, it's not. It's, you know, weird. Um, and if you are an American, right, you're part of the voting polity, your opinion of the stability may be very different than as a as an immigrant looking to move there, right, which is what we're talking about here. Even as a citizen, leaving because of stability is not a big deal. Leaving because I don't like what the stability brings, maybe. Uh, but if I was an, uh, an immigrant looking to move to the United States, and I was faced with this very factual information that the United States is incredibly unstable politically, should that impact my decision to move to the United States? No, it should have no bearing on it whatsoever. Should in looking at becoming an immigrant to Nicaragua, and for those who don't know, I'm an immigrant to Nicaragua from the United States. Did I leave the United States because of political instability there? No, it didn't affect me in a way that would make me need to move. It makes me unhappy with the way my government operates, but it doesn't cause any problems on its own. The, again, the stability may result in something you don't like, but the stability itself, not a problem. Uh, then Nicaragua was very stable. Was that a reason that I came to or stay in Nicaragua? No, honestly, because I'm not part of the voting polity, I don't care about the stability of the government. I mean, I care with the results that it brings that if, if stability is good for the people, then I want it to be stable. If instability is good for the people, then I want it to be unstable. I don't care about the stability of a country. I'm an immigrant. Until you're part of the voting polity and stability determines whether you, how your vote is used, why do you care? Right? It doesn't matter because it's not your instability. So it doesn't really have effects. And so this is where, when talking about Guatemala and Nicaragua, while I prefer Nicaragua and I'd love to come out and say, whoa, no, political stability, woo, woo, Nicaragua, it just doesn't matter. Right? And it's just reality. So Guatemala, what does instability mean for you as a potential immigrant looking at Guatemala? Well, pretty typically, it means nothing. The one thing that we tend to see, and this is, again, uh, one of the things that they say that uh, political stability reduces things like political upheaval and civil unrest, but it only reduces it, right? You're always going to have those things. What we do see regularly in Guatemala is protests, and, and mostly these are indigenous communities. It's very famous as a problem in Guatemala that there's the non-indigenous majority government and a very large indigenous community who uh, wants, um, you know, to be represented well, because it's their country traditionally. And, um, and so they'll, they'll often do things like block roads. Guatemala is not a violent country, right? You don't go to Guatemala and go, oh no, the road is blocked by the indigenous community. They're going to kill us all, right? No, they're not. They're going to disrupt your traffic and make you annoyed. So you think about how you vote, right? Or who you, you know, they want to get a point across just like, you know, you're in the United States and someone wants to stop you from, from uh, dis disrupting a river and putting in a dam that's going to hurt the environment. They're going to stop traffic. Are they going to shoot you as you go down the road? No, they're not going to shoot you, right? It's not what's happening. So yes, in Guatemala, famously, there is a bit of uh, disruption from uh, road blockages as a form of protest due to government instability. So you could argue both ways. Is it the stability that is causing those roadblocks? 
maybe, let's assume it is, to give it a worst case uh, uh, scenario for determining this factor for immigration. Let's just assume that we take those roadblocks and they are, they are directly tied to political instability rather than a simple uh, dissatisfaction with the government. That's different, right? What if you had roadblocks because someone was dissatisfied with the government? That's not stability, that is protest, right? You have protests all the time in places that are stable. You have protests all the time in places that are unstable. Even really stable places have a bunch of people who don't like something, right? Like it's always. And even places that are really good, it'll just adjust what you're arguing about, right? At first, you may be like, we want human rights, you know, let, you know, stop putting our children in prison. Okay, great. Yeah, everyone. But once you do that and you have all kinds of great human rights, then people are like, we want better retirement plans. We want nicer municipal parks, right? People will always protest. They'll just protest about nicer things and be less angry about it in most cases. Uh, and so that's actually a really good indicator of what a country is like. Are people arguing for things like civil liberties, like, oh, there are um, um, minority groups that are being, um, you know, discriminated against? Are women not getting equal rights? Are there, like, things like that? You have really strong uh, types of uh, things to protest against. Like these are signs of really failed societies that are trying to get the basics of humanity under their feet. Whereas in other places, you'll see people, you know, getting angry about the the level of retirement investment or the quality of parks or uh, the decorations that go on, right? Oh, we don't like the style of decorations that are being put up, right? These are signs that you have an incredibly healthy system that's doing really good things because people will always complain. And so they're complaining about things that are really ridiculous. If you were to go to like the United States and hear what the rest of the world has a tendency to, to protest about, you'd be like, oh my gosh, they, those are problems there? Like, we're worried about being shot in the streets. They're worried about the color of a, of a decoration, the font used on a building, right? So it's like, it's a completely different world. Um, and those are things that people don't realize how meaningful that is. So when it applies to this question, as an expat or an immigrant, right? Expat, temporary, immigrant, permanent, going to Guatemala. Yes, it's a bit political unstable. Are you going to witness this? Yeah, probably if you live there over a period of time, you will actually witness what, what we mean. Um, and so they do have things like road blockages uh, caused by political instability. They do have road blockages caused by weather as well, though. Road blockages are kind of a big thing in Nicaragua. I'm sorry, in, in Guatemala, it's just, it's just something you live with. Now, this is a really interesting point. You get a lot of road closures in Guatemala because people are protesting the government instability has led to road closures. So that's the impact you may have. So I know your, your thing you're going to say is here, okay, that may not be a full deciding factor, but that would be a negative to Guatemala. Maybe I don't want to go there because of that. Okay. But to be fair, in Nicaragua, there are common road closures due to things like parades and uh, people being happy with the government. So just to be clear, if we're going to tie road closures to instability in Guatemala, now it's protest, um, and that feels like a negative, but it's not violent, right? And in Nicaragua, you are going to have celebrations that close the road due to government stability. As an expat, which one actually affects you negatively more or less? They're kind of the same. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It's a lot more fun to get stuck waiting for a celebration than a protest but it's also a little bit less interesting. So at the end of the day, the only thing you really honestly normally care about is that there's a road closure and they happen everywhere. I really don't know that you could tie a negative to Guatemala in regards to its political instability as an immigrant. If your goal is to become a citizen of Guatemala or to become, if you're comparing, right, to become a citizen of Nicaragua, if you are truly looking at citizenship, becoming, so citizenship means part of the voting polity, if you're going to become a member of the voting polity in those countries, then the research into what the government is doing, how the voting works, how stable it seems to be, how protests are or are not a part of the ecosystem, right? Some countries like the United States, very low protest rates, mostly because it's scary, right? It's, it's dangerous to protest in the United States, um, not because the government shoots you, because the government encourages independent groups to shoot you, right? They do it at arm's length. That's how, <clears throat> that's how fear happens in the United States. It's different than a lot of countries. Um, and then in, in like Europe, you tend to have a lot of protest and violent ones. In France, France very politically unstable. 
Um, England has a tendency towards stability, but and, and doesn't have protests so much in the French way, definitely more organized, but is much more likely to have strikes and treat strikes as a form of protest, which it is, but not like we think protests in the streets, much more like not showing up to work. Completely different manner of speaking out against the government or unions or whatever. So it's everyone that has their own like take on these things and how they're going to affect you. Those are things that uh, if you're going to join the voting polity, you, you might need to consider how much that matters to you. But even that, Right? You have to kind of put it in perspective. Even if I was to take citizenship in a new country, um, there's a certain amount of, okay, but I'm, I'm already a member of this one, and that's, you know, here I'm joining because I like what they have. And while I would certainly, like, appreciate if a country was like, oh, we appreciate your opinion, you may now vote with us. Like, wow, that's really cool. And obviously my vote is a drop in a very big bucket. So like, but I also am there because I like, and this is a funny way to think of it, but I want you to think of it this way. When you're looking at a country, now ignoring the weather, ignoring the quality of the beaches, some of that stuff. But when you're looking at like how a country functions and saying, ooh, that country, I like how it functions. Like it makes me feel safe. It makes me feel happy. It makes me, whatever. I like how they deal with the roads. I like their decorations. What you're seeing are the results of government. And in a, in a normal system, right, where uh, normal meaning where the people are selecting that government, what you're seeing is the results of the voice of the people. And so if you really want to abstract this to a high level, and I'll just use Nicaragua as an example, but this is true everywhere, right? It doesn't, doesn't apply specifically to any place. It could apply to the U.S. It could apply to Guatemala. It could apply to France, right? If what you like is the place you're in, you need to step back and say, wow, the thing that I actually like is the opinions of the people I'm around. I'm joining this group voluntarily. That's how immigration works. And the things that this group of people have chosen to prioritize based on their vote or their protest or whatever has resulted in the place that I want to live. If I'm given the right to vote, should I? What are the chances I'm going to improve the opinion of the group? Well, I selected them because this group has a better opinion than the group I came from, if, if that's a factor for you. Well, my opinion as to that is, is very difficult. Like, like maybe I'm going to vote the same as the group. Well, then my vote was worthless. And maybe I'm going to vote against the majority. Well, then is my vote a good one? Because I easily don't understand where the value lies in the system. And I may, in a very, very, very tiny drop in the bucket kind of way, act against my own interest because it's easy in a democracy or any place where you have a vote to be... Uh, tricked, obviously, but just confused or not understand what the result of your vote is going to mean and, and do something that isn't in your own interest. And it may seem like it's in your interest, but, but when you get it, you realize you don't really like it. And so when you get to a place and you're happy with where they are, how often do you actually have value by contributing to the vote? It feels great to be asked to or to be offered to. And in some cases, maybe it's important that you do get involved. But in most cases, if I'm in a situation where I've been given that, uh, where I chose it specifically, I have a citizenship that I did not choose. I do really like where my citizenship is from, but I didn't choose it. Uh, it was something that was guarantee guaranteed to me by law. This is not my American citizenship. And uh, so I did not join it out of a love of the result of their government that I didn't, I joined it purely because of marriage. And so uh, in that particular case, maybe uh, you can make a good argument for, um, I, I, maybe I don't like some of the things they're doing, but I'm a, I'm a citizen, so I can vote and I can put in my, my little bit of tiny drop in the bucket of opinion and, and contribute. That I understand. But if it is something that you are specifically choosing because the result of the government are so good, for you, then seriously consider that that is just an artifact of the voting of the people and let them do their thing because they've been protecting you all this time. 
don't get involved, they probably know better than you. That's why you're here. Now, I understand that you may have been voting in the same way that they were somewhere else and just somewhere else you were dropping the bucket and here you're part of the majority. That is a thing that's happening in the world. People are moving to places where they, they tend to be more aligned. It's just, it's nature, right? Now that there's easy mobility in the world, that's going to happen. Same thing's happening inside the United States, same thing's happening outside the United States. So microcosm and reflecting. So at the end of the day, Dovi, good guy. When it comes to relocating to Guatemala, Guatemala, isn't it the case that Guatemala Guatemala is politically very unstable. Yes. Would it be a big con for relocating or retiring there in comparison to Nicaragua? No. I would, under normal circumstances, completely ignore this factor uh, when comparing the two countries or most countries. The stability of Nicaragua, the instability of Guatemala are not going to impact you as a retiree. They're not going to, re uh, as an immigrant, as a uh, uh, expat, they don't matter. Uh, other than just being a point of interest. They just don't affect you day to day. They don't affect you over the long term. You're good to go. Um, and, and importantly, right, when we're talking about the political instability in Guatemala, one of the fears is uh, a lack of rule of law. And Guatemala is not having that problem, right? It's not like they have a political instability and their legal system breaks down. That can happen in extreme cases of, of political instability, so that's a fear. But you have to you have to kind of temper that with certain places have that as a realistic fear that, oh, it's a breakdown of society? Yeah, that's bad, right? You probably don't want to live there. But Guatemala could be unstable the way that it is indefinitely, and it would never affect the law or basic things, and you have no reason to worry about it. So uh, it's a great example, and it's a great question, and I think the answer is just not what people expect absolutely would not affect my decision. I like Nicaragua for other reasons, but I love Guatemala. And I absolutely, if I wasn't living in Nicaragua, the fact that Guatemala is less stable would have absolutely zero influence on my decision uh, of whether or not to go there. And very likely my decision would be to go there. So thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Miller. And as always, I'll see all of you tomorrow.